whole book. Well, I think I might have that book in here. Well, let's just look on yours. Just, just leave it on yours. It's okay. I don't want the whole yeah. book. I think I have it. Let me see. Closer. Here. Okay. Let's do Kupala. Kup Which one? Kuplala. Da, 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 da. What's the number? Um, okay, six. Oh, Let's do two, number two, actually. Two is more fun. Two is more fun. Okay, how slow and fast?
Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shabbat Shalom. Chag Sameach. Did you all have good seders? Are you sick of matzah yet? It's got a long time to go yet. <laughs> I have to say it's amazing, Rabbi Nanas. I'm looking out here, and I see a, quite a good number of people who were with us just last night, and they came back for more. Wow, that's wonderful. So um, first of all, before we start anything, I'd like to remind you to please turn off or mute your cell phones. And tonight is a very special Shabbat. It's Shabbat Pesach. It's the only Shabbat during Pesach, but it's also the Shabbat where we celebrate our adult B'nai Mitzvah. What that means is adults who never had a bar bat mitzvah, they've studied for six months, and tomorrow is their ceremony. They're going to be reading from Torah, they're going to be chanting, I should say, and they're going to be giving a speech, and they're going to be helping lead the service, and we're honoring them tonight as well. So I'd like you to meet. Not all of them could be here, but the ones who are here, well, my adult B'nai Mitzvah of this year, please come up now. And I'm going to invite them to light the Shabbat candles. So um, two of you, why don't you do one, you can do one. Please, tur please turn to page two. Just a second. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Asher Kiddushanu B'mitzvotav V'tzivah Adult B'nai Mitzvah, we want you to stand right there for just a moment. Our adult choir is here for Shabbat Pesach, but also to celebrate you. And we have a special blessing that we want to offer you for people who are doing something for the very first time. Our Shehechianu blessing. We thank God for bringing us to this very wonderful, auspicious moment where you step into fully-fledged B'nai Mitzvah. We are very proud of you. Ma 
Mazel tov. Mazel tov. Thank you. They deserve that. Let's give them a little mazel tov. And you're all invited if you want to come tomorrow at 4 o'clock at the Glazer campus to hear their amazing speeches and watch them really shine. We would love to have you. So, um, as I said, it's Shabbat Pesach, and we read the Haggadah yesterday, and I was thinking about it, how, you know, Moses is kind of the big star of the Haggadah. But really, there are many, many heroes in the Pesach story that I want to mention throughout the service. And it's each individual's contribution that allowed us to gain our freedom. So before I start telling you who they are, I, if anybody can tell me two besides Moses, heroes of the Pesach story. We could start with that. Anybody want to volunteer? Miriam, and another one? Yes. Aaron, yes. So Miriam, you know, was a young girl when her, his, Moses' mother decided to hide him and put him in, the, save him and put him in the basket and send him down the river. So Miriam followed the baby and saw that Pharaoh's daughter, took him out of the river, and what did Miriam do when she saw that after the, he was discovered by the Egyptian princess? What did Miriam do? Does anybody know? She went, yeah, somebody raise their hand? Yes, my woman's Torah study uh, student. She went up to uh, Pharaoh's daughter and said, do you need a wet nurse? Would you need a nurse for this little baby? And well, the Pharaoh's daughter said yes, and. Miriam said, I know just the person. And who was that person? Moses' own mother. So I see Miriam as a, a person who um, improvises on the spot. She didn't know what was going to happen, but she improvised to make things better. And we think, I think of young Miriam. We, she, later, she did other things. But somebody who could take, seize the moment and improvise something. And then Aaron. What is it about Aaron that made him heroic? He was a translator for Moses. He spoke for Moses because Moses had a speech impediment. But I also think about Aaron. Aaron was an Egyptian slave. God said, Aaron's going to be your spokesperson. And Aaron had to get out of his comfort zone to do something important. So I see Aaron as a person who stepped out of his comfort zone and said, OK, I'm called to do this. I, I, I'm not a leader. I'm a slave. I mean, I wasn't raised in the palace. But I will step up and do what's required of me. So those are our first two heroes. And we're gonna continue our Shabbat with another hero, heroine in my mind, the Shabbat bride who brings beauty and peace to us every week. Please turn to page 20 for Lecha Dodi. La 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 la
the Shabbat bride is with us. She needs some company, some male company maybe. Actually, I don't know if angels are male or female. I always thought of them as male, but the Shabbat angels are joining us on page 24. We say Shalom Aleichem. Welcome, angels of peace. Thank you. 
So I, we've mentioned two heroes, but I count, I think, seven. So who can name three more heroes of the Pesach story? Rachel. Not shown, and who was not shown? He, Nachshon ben Abinadav was the first Israelite when the Israelites were at the Red Sea. It didn't just part. Everybody was waiting for it to part, and it didn't. And Nachshon, who was a great prince of the people, he was the first one. He took a bold step. So he decided to be leader. He decided to take a leap of faith and a step of faith, and he walked into the water up to his ankles, up to his knees, up to his chest. When it got to his neck, the water, the seas parted, according to the story. So he represents boldness and a leap of faith. Who else? Yes. Shifra and Pua. Who were they? They were the two midwives, and according to the... We don't know if they were... It says they were the midwives of the Israelite women. Were they Egyptian midwives, or were they Hebrew midwives? but they were the midwives that Pharaoh said, every time a baby boy, boy is born, Hebrew baby boy, kill it at birth. And they didn't, they refused. It said they feared God, they would not do it. This is mentioned in the book of Exodus, these two women, very rarely do we hear women's names. Even Miriam and Moses' mother are not mentioned at this point, and at by name. And they were the first ones to stand up and say no. They defied authority. There's a higher authority, there's a higher good, and they refused to participate in killing of the babies. Even though Pharaoh was considered a god, they, the rabbis say they knew there was a, a greater god and a greater ethic and morality that they adhered to. And so this is a perfect time to rise for the Borahu on page 28. And it's a call to prayer. Just like Shifra and Pua were called to a higher learning. with me the blessing in English on the bottom of the page. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, ruler of the universe, who speaks the evening into being, skillfully opens the gates, thoughtfully alters the time and changes the seasons, and arranges the stars in their heavenly courses according to plan. You are creator of day and night, rolling light away from darkness and darkness from light transforming day into night and distinguishing one from the other. Adonai Tzvaot is your name, ever-living God. May you reign continually over us into eternity. Blessed are you, Adonai, who brings on we continue with God's love poem to us on page 32, Ahavat Olam. Okay. 
אדוני, אלוהינו, בשופטינו ובקומינו, נצליח בחוקיך. על כן, אדוני, אלוהינו, בשופטינו ובקומינו, נצליח בחוקיך. בני Hello? Oh, please be seated. Everybody's waiting, looking. Should I sit? Should I? So um, our B'nai Mitzvah tomorrow are going to be um, leading some of the service, the Shabbat service, and um, one of our Bat Mitzvahs are here today who's going to be leading the um, Via Hafta. Rachel, I don't know if you can do it, because she, she's got her a, a little partner tonight. Okay, and we're, we're all going to do it with her. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Page 96, 36. <laughs> Advarim ha'ele, asher anochi mitzavecha, hayom al levavecha, veshinantam levanecha, bedibarta ha'am, beshivtecha ha'bevetecha, uvelechtecha ha'vaderech, uveshochbecha ha'ubekumecha. וקשר תם לאות על ידך, והיו לתותפות בין עיניך. וכתב תם על מזוזות ביתך, ובישריך. למען תזכרו, ועשיתם את כל מצוותי, ואיתם קדושים לאלוהיכם. Ahani Adonai Eloheichem Asher hoseiti etchem Me'eretz Mitzrayim Liot lachem l'Elohim Ani Adonai Eloheichem Thank you. 
We continue with a very special Micha Mocha this evening. So many of you may know that Micha Mocha is our song of freedom. Uh, these are the precise words that were said to have come out of the Israelites' lips as they reached the other side of the Red Sea or the Reed Sea. Um, when they tasted for the first time freedom. So just imagine what it must have felt like that the sense that they had, um, all of the, the things that they must have been experiencing, not just in their heads, but with their entire bodies, the smells, the sights, what it felt like in their taste. And as they experienced that, they opened their mouths, and these were the words that came out. I have a whole bunch of Israelites here to help me. <laughs> Good night. 
thank you to our just extraordinary adult choir and reformed uh, this year. Um, I'm hearing a lot of beautiful voices out there, so if there's anyone who's interested in joining, we're going to start up at the end of the summer, so you can talk to me about it. And this is the Torah portion tomorrow. It's the Shabbat Pesach, and so Michelle here will be chanting that exact verse out of the Torah tomorrow. Um, so it's perfect, beautiful synchronicity. So we have, speaking of freedom, we have two more heroes who helped create the Pesach story. We have so far Shifra and Pua, the midwives. We have Miriam. We have Nachshon. We have Aaron. There are two more. Anybody have any guess who they are? They're women. That's a hint. The mother is always forgotten. <laughs> The mother, yes, Moses' mother, hello, remember her? She, and what did she do that was so amazing? Not that she hid her child, but she sacrificed her own need and gave up her child to try to save his life. And we remember um, so many mothers during the Holocaust who sent their children away in order to save their lives in the hopes that they would be spared. And so that is a very heroic act to sacrifice for the betterment of your loved one. And finally, the only non-Jew in the story, who? Moses' wife, she's not in this part of the story. Moses' stepmother, Pharaoh's daughter. Pharaoh's daughter who, what did she do? She defied her father. She stepped out of the role that she was expected to play as the Egyptian princess and had compassion, and some Midrashim say she was actually in the river trying to save babies, and she was defying her father. And she is the one that took him out of the water. And the Midrash says that she converted to Judaism and went with the, on the Exodus and left. That's one of the stories. And her name was Batya, according to the Midrash, means daughter of God. And I read a beautiful interpretation. God said, just like you said, took Moses and called him your son, even though he wasn't your son, I will call you my daughter, even though you weren't born to be my daughter, because Batya means daughter of God. So those are our seven heroes and heroines, and the reason I'm talking about this is because I'm going to ask you something a little bit later. But all of them, when they crossed the sea, and they were their first night on the shore, probably sang a song, said a prayer, something like the Hashkivenu which is, if we look at it on page 42, let's just read in English what this beautiful prayer says, something that we could say today, and it's so relevant. Grant, O oh God, that we lie down in peace and raise, up, uh, raise us up our guardian to life renewed. Please join me. Spread over us the shelter of your peace Guide us with your good counsel, for your name's sake, be our help. Shield and shelter us beneath the shadow of your wings. Defend us against enemies, illness, war, famine, and sorrow. Distance us from wrongdoing. For you, God, watch over us and deliver us. For you, God, are gracious and merciful. Guard our going and coming to life and peace evermore. Ashkivenu. Shkivenu Adonai Eloheinu Leshalom Ve'ha'amidu Thank you. 
Sukkot shalom aleinu ve'alekol ha'mu Yisrael We rise, turn to page 46 for the Amidah, and I'm going to invite our bat mitzvah, Courtney Hazlett, to help us lead it. Adonai sefaitativta ufiya gitilatecha Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu Velohe avoteinu vimoteinu Elohe Avraham, Elohe Yitzhak, Elohe Yaakov Elohe Sarah, Elohe Rivka Elohe Rachel, Elohe Leah, El Hagadol, Hagibor, Vehanora, El Elyon, Kum El Chasadim Tovim, Vekonei Hakov, Vezoher Chastei Havot Vimahot, Umevi Geula Livne Venehem, Leman Shemho Beahava. Melech Ozer Umoshia Umagi Rukata Adonai Magin Abraham the Ezra Sarah Atagi Borle Olam Adonai Mechaye Hakolata Rav Lehoshia Morid Hata Mechakel Chasim Bechesed Mechaye Hakol Berachamim Rabin So Mech Noflim Verofe Cholim Umatir Asurim Umekahayem Emanato Lishene Afar Mihamoha Baalgevurot Umido Mela Melech my meat Umechaye Umats Mia Yeshua Venehan Atal Hachayot Barukata Adonai Mechaye Hakot we continue silently with the beautiful words of our Siddur, our own private meditations. When you are finished, you may be seated.
So the cantor and I were talking about introducing this idea of counting the Omer. This is a special counting uh, from the seven weeks, from Pesach, seven weeks to Shavuot. During those seven weeks in the Torah, the Israelites walked from the edge of the sea, crossed to Mount Sinai, where they received the Ten Commandments, and that's Shavuot. So from Pesach to Shavuot, Shavuot literally means weeks. It's seven weeks. And there was this tradition of every day of those seven weeks, you would give a little offering of grain, which was called, at the temple, which was called the Omer. And so now there's a tradition of every day we count how many Omers we've given, or how, what day of the counting of the Omer is. Today is the second day of the Omer. Oh, actually, third. yeah, because it starts with the second day of Pesach. So today's the third day. So um, page 278, Chazan. Why don't we join in reading the blessing together? Um, you can find it in the middle of the page. Let's read the Hebrew together. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam Asher Kitshanu Bemitzvotav Bitzivanu Al Sfirat HaOmer. Our praise to you, Adonai, Sovereign of all, who hallows us with mitzvot, commanding us to count the Omer. Today is the third day, which is uh, two days of the Omer. No weeks and two days of the Omer. So we hope this uh, practice, you can take it into your lives. There are a lot of spiritual associations connected with, uh, with the Omer. You can find them all over your Instagram feed. Um, and it's a really wonderful way to continue to connect and connect your uh, freedom of festival with your upcoming freedom of revelation. Exactly. So now we're going to turn for a moment to remember those who need a blessing of healing, spiritual healing, physical healing, emotional healing, and we're going to say the Misha Berach on page 253. I'm going to read names of our congregants who have asked for a special blessing of healing. Those of you watching at home, we may be reading your names, and then I'm going to ask you to rise and say out loud anyone whose name needs to be blessed tonight. I'm going to start with my list. Nicole Alkov, Isaac Ashur Zadeh, Simon Aziz, Emily Blau, Carol Brook, Chaim David, Jacob Friedman, Merlo Gadushi, Levi Jonathan, James Klein, Jack Liebhaber, Michael Levy, Ronald Lanicki, Philip Marber, Jila Meshkanian, Josh Mills, Annette Pansky, Trevor Sangster, Charles Schwartz, Karen Shanbrum, Alan Sirodi, Meryl Werber, Stacy Wernick. If you would like now to have someone else's name uh, blessed, please stand up. And when I point to you, say their name.
It was 1942 in the concentration camp Bergen-Belsen. A group of Jews had approached Rav Yisrael Spira, the Blazova Rebbe, with an incredible request. Passover was only two weeks away, and many of them, sensing this might be their last Pesach, were desperate to find a way to celebrate the festival. The thought of eating chametz, unleavened bread, was an anathema to them, so they came up with an idea. They would appeal to the logical German mind of their oppressors and ask to receive their rations as flour and water instead of bread. And they would ask as well to build on their own time at night a crude oven with which to bake their rations into matzah. After all, they reasoned, if the prisoners would start baking their own bread, this would be more efficient and economical and would appeal to the mindset of their masters. They asked the Rebbe if he would be willing to present their petition, signed by over 80 inmates, to the SS Commandant of the camp, in the hopes that the Rebbe's merit and the merit of his illustrious ancestors would somehow protect them all and ensure a successful outcome. The Rebbe took some time to consider their request. Handling the, handing the Nazis a list of Jewish names was a dangerous thing to do, especially in a concentration camp. Yet, here were a group of Jews, enslaved, starving, and almost beyond hope, and yet still willing to risk everything for the sake of a matzah. How could he be an obstacle to the fulfillment of such a holy deed? So the Rebbe asked for an audience with the camp commandant, and through some miracle, and after a number of severe beatings, their request was granted. Two weeks later, on the eve of Pesach, on Erev Pesach, the Jews of Bergen-Belsen actually baked matzah in preparation for the festival. Then the Rebbe announced he would conduct a secret Seder in his barracks for those interested. Attending, never mind conducting, a Seder in Bergen-Belsen was a crime punishable by death. Nevertheless, nearly 300 Jews crowded into the Rebbe's barracks that Pesach night. When they reached the point in the Seder that spoke of their bondage in Egypt, there was a palpable air of pain and anguish that spread through the barracks. Avadim hayinu lefaro b'mitzrayim, ata b'nei Once we were slaves to Pharaoh in Egypt, and now we are free. The Rebbe could hear the sobs and feel the pain in every Jew's heart and knew he had to say something. How could a Jew recite these words in Bergen-Belsen in 1942? He looked around the barracks in the dim moonlight, seeing the gaunt, hollow faces and hopeless eyes, and he began. Why is this Seder different from all other Seders? We have no four cups of wine to bless, no tables laden with good food and fine china, no children to ask the four questions, and no vegetable, vegetables to dip in commemoration of the exodus from Egypt so long ago. Our matzah burned small and barely recognizable as the same matzah we had before the war reminds us more of where we are than where we once were. Only maror, the bitter herbs, are in abundance this year. But if even here, in the depths of our darkness and despair, we can nonetheless recall the exodus and celebrate Pesach, then we are truly free. Freedom, you see, isn't about where you are. It's about who you are. So tonight I ask you, who are you? Are you like Shifra and Pua, who rise and uh, rebel against an authority that is corrupt and evil? Are you like Miriam, who compromises and improvises and finds a way to solve something in a dangerous time? Are you like Moses' mother, Yocheved, who sacrifices 
to save a loved one and to do what is best even though it's painful? Are you like Pharaoh's daughter who defied and broke the mold of who she was supposed to be and didn't follow the script but did what she thought who she, but became who she wanted to be? Or are you Aaron who stepped out of his comfort zone to, be, to do what was asked of him because he knew it was important? Or are you like Nachshon who took a leap of faith and went forward even though the future was unclear? It doesn't matter where you are, it's who you are. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you. So, um, first of all, I want to again welcome my uh, adult B'nai Mitzvah and just introduce you, um, the ones that are here. So there's Rachel Branscombe, please rise. Iran Carranza, oh, she had to step up. Iran Carranza, Michelle Hawley, uh, Courtney Hazlett, Alec, Alex Lorch, Fonda Morgan, Amanda Rose, Talia Weisel, and Michelle Zweig. And last year's class came to support oh, them, so will you stand so up nice. from last year's class? Stand up. Say hello. That's These are, and there's Yaakov, too. So Fantastic. we welcome all of you here tonight. We do, and we want to offer you a very special blessing, the priestly benediction oh. um, through a setting by Lisa Levine uh, called Ruach Elohim.
And we want to thank our adult choir and our musicians. Thank you so Hope much. Hope and Leo and Alice and Susan Rosenstein. Thank you. Now is the time where we remember those who are no longer with us as we prepare for Kaddish. Also, afterwards, please join us for Kiddish and Motsi and then a little Onik. But now we're going to turn ourselves to thoughts of memory. And we begin by, sorry, I want to say, we also have a tradition here of anyone who is observing the first 30 days or a yard site to please rise so we will know and be able to support you. We begin by remembering those who passed away during Shloshim the past 30 days. Norman Epstein, Donna Golden, Ron Gordon, Homer Gurin, Ruth Callen, Joey Klein, Phyllis Kogan, John Levy Jr., Judith Miller, Ronald Schiff, Fran Shambram, Dina Taslett, Susanna Tizabi, David Wolf. We also remember those whose yort sites occurred during this past week, the anniversaries of their deaths. Nate Adlin, Winifred Anderson, Moses Armel, Eli Moses Addy, Roberta Barr, <coughs> Lori Baumwall, Cindy Bender, Evan Bennett, <clears throat> Jack Berman, Joseph Barrow, Reba Block, Leslie Bluestone, Ronald Blumkin, Doris Bortz, Paul Chan, Robert Cohen, Ben Cohen, Betty Stein Coleman, Elliot Disner, Victor Eppert, Musa Farhadi, Beatrice Ferris, W. Ben Finkel, Ivan Freestadt, Etu Fallop, Ruth Glader, Jerry Gold, <coughs> Paul Goldberg, Sophia Gray Goldman, Burton Goldwater, Milton Gumbert, Eleanor Guthman, Eleanor Hallam, Rose Hamburger, Betty Hollinger, Rita Howard, David Howard, Felix Judah, Ethel Kahn, Beverly Kay, Helen Kelson, Mark David Kessler, John King, Sylvia Klausner, Sandra Kobata, Dora Kreshek, Richard Culwin, Morris Lee Kurtz, Lynette Kurtzman, Bob Coit, Louis Lackman, Paul Lamport, Morris Levine, Rachel Levitt, Charles Lieber, Rose Linker, Barbara Lipman, Gilbert Leiser, Hans Lowe, William Lowenberg, Alice Rose Malin, Thelma Marshall, Marcus Merrin, Belle Miller, Leonard Miller, Eleonora Mindell, Nathan Nordell, Ronald Onken, Jeremy Orlando, Roslyn Ostrovsky, Nehemia Persov, Ernest Phillips, Albert Rice, Dorothy Natalie Rosen, Myron Rosenbach, Arnold Rosenthal, Bernard Schiff, Linda Schneit, Abraham Shapiro, Christina Siegel, Linda Geller Silverman, Odell Silverstein, Harry Silverstein, Leo Simons, Katie Skluth, Mark Slangerup, Selma Sobel, Bella Steyer, Marilyn Stein, Stephen Sturman, Justin Herbert Strawgate, Wendy Jo Suckman, Herschel Tenenbaum, Semyon Weinstock, Philip Wexler, William Vile, and Julius Zellman. Are there any other names to add? Thank you. We also remember those who gave their lives defending the United States of America and the State of Israel, and those who died in senseless violence, terrorism, war, and illness, and those who have no one to say Kaddish for them. We take them all as our own as we all rise and turn to page 294. Yit gadal vi yit gadash shemei raba, vi alma divrach hirute vi amlich malkute, v'chaye echon uve yom echon uve chaye dechol beit Yisrael, v'agala vizman kari vimru amen. 
Yeheshme Raba Mevarach Leolam Ome Omaya Yit Barach Vishta Bach Vipa Ar Vitro Mam Vitna Se Vita Dar Vita Le Vita Lalsh Made Kudisha Brihu Leela Mi Kal Birhata Vishirata Tushbahata Venechamata Dami Ram Vialma Vimru Amen Yehesh Lama Raba Min Shamaya Vachayim Aleinu Vial Kol Yisrael Vimru Amen O Se Shalom Bimramav Hu Ya Ase Shalom Aleinu Vial Kol Yisrael Vimru Amen Ose shalom im Romav, hu ya se shalom aleinu. Ose shalom im Romav, hu ya se shalom aleinu. Ose shalom im Romav, hu ya Shalom in Roma, we are saying Shalom, Aleinu. Oh, Shalom in Roma, we are saying Shalom, Aleinu. Oh, Shalom in Roma, we are saying Shalom, Aleinu. the B'nai Mitzvah of the, of, the, of the year to come up here for the Kiddush. Please join us for Kiddush on page five. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Borei peri hagafen Baruch Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Asher kidishana be mitzvata vavirata vanu Veshabat kocho be yahava uvratzon in chilanu Zikaron le maase vereishit Ki hu yom tehilo le mikrae kodesh Oh, 
L'chaim. Before they uh, lead us in the, the mozi, um, because Judy Pies is standing right in front of me, I remembered that Susan and, and I, uh, Rabbi Nanis and I, are going to lead a trip. Judy, Judy knows what it's like to travel with me and the American Conference of Cantors, so you can talk to her about her experience coming to Cuba with us. Uh, we hope the rest of you will consider coming to Eastern Europe with Rabbi Nanis and myself in the fall. Um, we have lots of information about this amazing trip. Uh, and let's join in the mozi. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech ha'olam ha'motzi lechem min ha'aretz. Amen. And sorry, folks, no challah tonight. But Shabbat Shalom and Chag Sameach nonetheless.